in the days of slavery, often I stood looking into the sky. Its beautiful color was good to see. Once the sky began to glow just like a burning coal. After that, there was a terrible dry spell. Another time, the sun disappeared over the entire island. The day was black as the night. It was as if the moon and the sun were fighting. The world went backwards. People were struck dumb with terror. Other people were killed. Heart attacks. I don't know what caused these things to happen. It is all nature's concern. Nature is everything. Even those things we cannot see. Gods above us rule our fortune. I know that they can fly above us. Anything that they want to do, they can accomplish with magic spells. But why didn't they do something about the slavery? I can't figure out the answer to that. As I see it, slavery began with the scarlet bandanas. Till then, all of Africa was protected by the ancient war. The ancient war was made of palm trees and bark. In it, there were a thousand insects, and they would sting and bite like the devil. That's the reason the white men weren't in Africa long before. Then they had the idea to play a trick and wave their scarlet bandanas. When the black king saw the red bandanas, they shouted, Go! Bring me that scarlet cloth! And the Negroes ran out to the ships like a herd of sheep. They were forever trapped. The Negroes always had a kind of fatal attraction for the color red. Red was their undoing. That is how the slaves came to Cuba.
because I was a Cimarron. I never got to know my parents. I never even saw them. This is not sad, though, because it is true. My godparents told me when I was born, December 1860, on the day of St. Esteban, the one in the calendars. That's why I'm called Esteban. Those days, white men were buying and selling the blacks as though they were piglets. <laughs> Me too. I went to the sugar plantation floor de Sago. Only ten years old, the first time I tried to escape. They captured me and beat me up with the chains. Even now I still can feel it. They carried me back with the handcuffs put on and sent me again to the fields. The blacks were treated in those days just like convicts. No one now will believe these stories, although I lived through it all myself. If a Negro child caught his master's eye, they took him with them to the house, and God knows what they did to him there. The whole day long, they'd make him stand next to the table, keeping off the flies. Those white men would stuff themselves the whole day long. And if a single insect got in their food, they'd curse him and have the servants with him. I have never been in the master's house. Every morning at half past four, the overseer rang the Ave Maria. <laughs> By the ninth stroke, all the slaves had to be out of bed. At six, they rang the bell for the inspection. Out front of the barracks, the women to the left, the men to the right. It was a big, wide, dust-covered place. Not even one single tree, not one palm tree, not one cedar, not one fig tree. After roll call, they drove us out to the sugar fields. Then they made us work until the sun began to set. 
Then they rang the prayer bell At nine o'clock the last bell sounded And the overseer came to the gate And locked us in During slavery, I saw some really terrible things happen. In the boiler house of the refinery were the stocks. The stocks were made of crude and strong thick board, and there were five holes in them for your head, your hands, and both of your feet. Any kind of provocation, any kind of crap, they would lock you up into the stocks and beat you two, sometimes three months at a time. The overseer always had his whip ready. They made the pregnant women lie on their stomachs so they would not lose their babies. Believe me, I've seen many of my comrades with bleeding shoulders. <laughs> to heal your torn up skin, they would rub you with tobacco leaves, with salt and with urine. That burned you like fire. I knew that I could not stand that kind of life much longer. Only a nobody would put up with it. I could not stay there. All I thought of was to escape. I could not go. The slaves were mostly frightened by the thought of living in the mountains. They'd be captured just like that, they told me. But still I decided the woods would be better. What could be worse than working in the fields? That was like being in hell. My 
eyes on the overseer. That son of a bitch, I watched him closely. I can still see him now. He never took his hat off. The slaves were frightened of him. He had a whip. One slash from that and he cut your skin to ribbons. One day I couldn't take it anymore. Like a fox. I whistled, and he turned round to look. I grabbed a rock from the ground as he turned, and I smashed it into his filthy, ugly face. I hit him good and hard. I knew that, for he screamed. Don't let him go. I ran off and did not look back until I was alone in the mountains, in the woods. I liked my life in the woods. I knew my way round there. I spent many years out there in the forest. I had good luck like any child. I wanted nothing more to do with slavery. I would forget that I was in hiding and start up whistling and singing my songs. I didn't say a word to anyone at all. How I love that peace and quiet. With 
my rope I set off and captured some piglets. I cooked the meat on my fire. I had lots of vegetables there. And leaves quite useful for cigars to roll yourself. And wild honey. The water in the mountains was very good. I had most everything, all except women. Women kept out of the woods. Only horses, there were horses. I could always find myself one. But those horses we need as though ridden by the devil. The overseers would hear the noise and come on the run. An idiot who would get caught and put in jail just for screwing a horse. Out there in the woods, I had to learn how to live with the trees. I knew one special tree who cried nags, ooch, ooch, wee, wee, ooch, ooch, like a bird. Ah, a tree is something splendid. It is like a god. Ah, no one dares to hurt or kill it. For a tree always gives you all he has. Don't waste your time on others. You can't even trust the Holy Ghost. A Cimarron always has himself to rely on. But I had the birds and the trees to entertain. And I always had enough to eat. In the woods I had everything. Oh, 
When you try to talk of spirits and ghosts, it's impossible to say just what they look like. Everybody sees these spirits, although most people do not want to talk about it. I myself have seen unbelievable things happen. The head less oh, snap. Oh, is a horrid apparition. Once I met that headless horseman and he told me, Go down there and get that gold. I did as he told me, scared to death. And what do you think I found? Just a pile of black coal. That was the ghost of some poor joker or in some stupid devil. There's another kind of spirit called the Quijus. They come out of the river and sun themselves on a warm day. The black little people with heads like frogs have. And the mermaids come up from the sea, especially on St. John. They love to calm their hair and coax the men to come after them. They often drag the fishermen down to Have a special magic by which the man does not drown. Should not be afraid of spirits. The living can be far more dangerous than the dead. Huh? If you should meet a ghost, then you should ask, What is it you want, brother? When someone dies, or if he's asleep, right away his soul runs off and runs off. It is tired because he must put up all day with so many things. That's why he runs off. 
and fly through the sky and over the ocean like a snail that has left its shell. want to think much about it. It is all so mysterious. It makes a man tired. But a man keeps on thinking, and mostly when no one's near him, thinks even in his dreams. It is good to talk about it. For many a man it's cost his life all this talking. Anyway, those ghosts are no different than some of those fairy tales that seem to have no ending. No one knows the answer. people shouting, we are free! That's what they cried. I heard it, but I couldn't believe it. I don't know why, but I thought to myself, this is a lie. to leave the mountain As I left the forest I met an old woman with two children in her arms I spoke to The slaves are really free now. The woman answered, Yes, it is true. So I went further and tried to find myself some work. They'd taken away the locks and doors and bolted the doors of the barracks. And the guards were also gone. But the work out in the fields was the same as ever. After three months, I had torn all the skin off my hands, and my feet were badly swollen. The sugar cane and heat nearly killed you. A day in the fields, it seems never ending. The overseers were just as bad as before. If someone tried to take a break, they told you, you get yourself fired. That was what they called liberation, which we had heard so much about. 
I told myself at the time that this was a filthy lie. Ranting and raving don't prove one thing. <laughs>